what you're looking at is, I think, a newspaper dispenser and a propane tank unit. These things are a new hot commodity in Portland. This is a unit that they couldn't break into, so they tied some straps around it and hauled it off in their car, and the straps broke, and so they abandoned it on the street. It stood out in my mind because I had been in a local market, and when I was in this market, they were talking about the fact that their propane containers keep getting broken into and stolen. On the one hand, I really feel for the workers that have to deal with this kind of stuff. Uh, it makes their job really hard, comes at no small expense. Also, people are cold. And they're willing to do desperate things to try and stay warm. In this Hey Portland newsletter I got, there's an article on shelters in need of additional funds. This article has some really great links. I listened to this podcast episode from Morgan Godvin, a postgraduate fellow at Northeastern's University Drug Policy Research Organization and former heroin addict. Just to quote briefly from the podcast, she says, Major 110 was one thing to deal with addiction, but that's not going to solve our housing crisis. Multnomah County has unspent funds for housing. We know that housing first works, right? Specifically, also eviction protection, because once people become chronically homeless, it becomes much more challenging. And I'm terrified because we are breaking records in Oregon for monthly evictions. It's much easier when you're addicted to wake up and continue using drugs than it is to chart the path towards recovery. So hey, Portland linked to this article where the city is looking for $24 million to keep shelters open. Tina Kotek is pushing for a bill that will raise $65 million for homeless services. So back to this thing, what I was told by a neighbor who lives in the apartments next to it is that we have a shortage of warming shelters. At one point right before the storm, we were down to apparently two. What the neighbor was saying is that part of the problem is that they actually just need volunteers to staff. There are many ways that we can support. If you see Multnomah County... There's a lot of people living here, and this is all we've got in terms of shelters. And if you look at the key, there's only one overnight center. And just generally, these things are few and far between. So you could imagine if you're homeless and you've uh, got no method of transportation and the public transportation is shut down because of the storm, if you want to get from here to your nearest shelter, uh, good luck. If you want to volunteer, this is the link and you can open one of these up that's in your area. They have a list of requirements for volunteers. Currently, the only thing that they're requiring you to do is take this Bloodborne Pathogens course, which I'm going to open this tab up because I signed up and I need to take the course. Then they have a list of the openings that are needed. You can see as you get closer to the end of the night, the tough hours, the graveyard shifts or early morning shifts, two of nine slots filled. So these centers need volunteers. And then obviously they also need your money. So this is Blanchet House or Blanchett House. Uh, I'm not sure how to say it. I've been told this is one of the good homeless service organizations to donate to. There's probably a ton of them that are doing great work and need your financial support. And then the last thing, if you are in need of housing services yourself, you can call 211 to get help. So hopefully you are staying warm, fed and sheltered and if, if that's the case, be grateful and recognize that a lot of folks do not have that and need your help. And don't steal propane.